15 minutes before the call, my good friend Tracy Walker and I get a text message to say, hey girl, wanna hold the phone? And I'm coming back to Target buying diapers. <laughs> I pull over to the side of the road, and I'm like, call, trying to call Tracy, and she's not answering. Right. So I text Dave, I'm like, yeah, sure. sure. And I'm trying to get a hold of Tracy to say, what are we gonna talk about? And it never happened, and she just hopped on the phone, and we had a call with you guys, and we had a conversation on that call. You guys, how many of you are on that call? <laughs> and we encouraged you that no matter what you had to go through to get here to do what? Get, get money! It's not ironic that we're in Chicago. We get here on Tuesday, and then there becomes this massive flood of rain, right? How many of you went to the cancel flights? Did you do what you had to do to get here? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. Oh, I could. You literally went through hell and high water <laughs> to get here. And that says a lot. And I want to talk to you guys about that tonight. Because I do believe in destiny. I don't believe that anything happens by chance. And just when we got here, you know, it, it's amazing because you get these opportunities to get on stage. And of course, a lot of us want to try to figure out what are we going to talk about? And the first person I encountered when I got here set the stage for what I understood this weekend then. Tracy and I were standing in the lobby, um, I guess it was like Wednesday morning, and we had just come back to breakfast, we were doing something, and a young lady walked up to Tracy and was like, hi, I just want to say hi. And then Tracy was like, well, did you see Nicole? And she was like, oh, yes, yes, hi, Nicole, hi, how are you? I emailed you, and she started talking to me about a conversation we had. And so we, we started talking a little bit about her being here. And I always ask people, well, where, where did you come from? And she shared with me where she came from. And I said, well, how did you get here? Because all the chaos was going on with the planes and everything. And she said, well, I took a train. I said, really, where did you come from? She said, well, I brought my sister. And it was a young little girl up there playing on the computer. And so I said, okay, awesome. So are you guys in this hotel? And she said, yes. And I said, well, are you going to check in? And she said, well, I said, we can't check in until Saturday. And so I said, well, what are you guys going to do until Saturday? It's Wednesday. And she said, we're just going to sleep in the lobby. Okay, I'm a mom of two girls, two, I mean, two kids, okay? Five-year-old and one-year-old. And I look up and I see her little sister, and I'm thinking, uh-uh. This little seven-year-old needs to go rent that he's got for Amtrak train for 15 hours. They need somewhere to sleep. Now I don't even remember her name. But what I did, I said, well, hey, we're on our way out. Take my key, go to the room and go rest. And we'll talk when I get back. Now, I'm from LA. I'm not from Beverly Hills, I'm from South Central. <laughs> <laughs> so the blue side of me said, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, okay. I went out here, I'm not gonna lie. I was thinking about, okay, we're not leaving the room this night. <laughs> Just in case. That's what the little step up. And so we went out and we actually didn't get back until about 3 30 in the morning and we were exhausted. And so I didn't even want to make conversation. I was just gonna go to bed, I'll talk to you in the morning. And I noticed she was sitting up waiting for me to arrive. And as I'm getting dressed, I'm just asking, what's your story? And she said, well, you know, I got in power six days ago. And I came here, I knew that I needed to come here because I, I need something. And I just said, if I show up, I'll figure out if this is going to work or not. She said, I've been in 60 days, I haven't made any money, and this is going to be the determining factor of if this is what I'm going to do. And so when I heard her say that, I was sleeping, and the hood side of me said, okay, we need to get her tomorrow. <laughs> but the other angelic side of me said, sit down and listen and talk to her about that story. So we sat down and we ended up talking for about an hour. And I found out she'd been raising herself since she was 14. She's mm -hmm. been through a series of events, the oldest of seven kids, fighting her way through life, trying to find a chance. And she said, you know, I know I'm smart. She said, I know I have a chance. She said, I go on these jobs and, and I get these jobs and I, I, I learn everything before they even have to teach me. I'm really good at what I do. She said, but it's not a challenge. I want a challenge. But then she turned around and said, well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to stick in power because I haven't made any money. I don't know what's going on. It's not working. 
And so she started also telling me, like, you know what, I'm meditating now. She was telling me she's meditating and she's smiling all the time and all the spiritual encounters she's had. And so I went out to her, I said, well, I see that you're trying to determine if you're a success, if you've accomplished anything in the past 60 days based on if, if you've made any money. But you just sat here and told me that you're 23 years old, every experience in your life until this moment has been chaos. And you've been looking for change. And you're not being challenged. And it's 60 days since you've been in empower with your amazing leader. She's on John Rose's team. You're amazing for the team, teaching you things. You're now experiencing life like you've never experienced it before, but you're ready to quit because you haven't paid your first dollar. I said, I want you to understand that your success, and I gave her a quote that I learned a long time ago, that riches is what you have, but wealth is who you are. And I said, in you is a burning desire because you went to hell the high water to get here. Look at sleep on the couch for three nights because you knew you had to get something. And this is the environment that has been cultivated in preparation for this moment for you to get exactly what you need. And that's why you're here. I said, so don't, I know you need to make money. Her situation is a little bleak and she's a little desperate in her situation. I said, but understand that this is exactly where you need to be to take you to the next level and get you what you need. I shared that story with you because I was reminded of myself and my journey. For those of you who don't really know me and don't know my story, like I said, from the South Central Los Angeles, <laughs> and I grew up in an environment in the 80s, a lot of drugs, a lot of gangs. Um, had a loving environment, but when you live in a certain community, there's just certain things that you succumb to. And I went through a period in my life at the age of 13 where I became very rebellious. Drugs, alcohol, fighting, getting kicked out of five schools in a year, getting arrested for going back on those campuses for doing different things. And I spent the rest of my high school years trying to make up for all the failures that I made, but I was at a point where I didn't feel like I had a purpose in life. I didn't feel like there was anything designed for me to do because I thought I was dumb. Because I wasn't good in school, I didn't fit in, because I was weird. Well, something happened, I was in an abusive relationship, and this guy basically told me, I'll save your life if you leave. And he attempted to. And I said, I gotta do something to get out of this situation. And I started applying to colleges, and it just so happens out of all the rejection letters I got, I got one letter that said, you've been cordially invited on academic probation to attend, it was Tuskegee University. Went to that school, ended up having a journey, and I'm standing on the stage today. Why am I sharing that with you? Well, as she was sharing her story with me, I began to think about how many of us think about life. We think life is like a road trip. Anybody have a road trip here? Yeah. We have people who I know drove from Canada. People drive from all over. Some people drove up from Florida, California. But you know, when you're planning a road trip, what you do is you sit down, and you say, okay, I live in Los Angeles and I'm trying to get to Chicago. And what do we do? We go, we go to Google Maps or whatever direction we need and we get the directions and we get on the highway and we come here. And many of us feel like our life should be like a road trip. You have a destination that you want, you get directions and you just get there. But as I'm listening to her share her story, I started realizing that our life is similar to my most favorite show in the whole wide world. Any amazing race fans in here? Yeah. I'm a big fan of the amazing race. It's a trip all around the world. It gives you an opportunity to compete. And you have different scavengers. It's like a scavenger hunt. It's a scavenger hunt race. And what you basically do, I think it's like 10 or 12 teams. And they start off, this year they start off at, the, at LA at the Griffith Observatory. And they give you a clue of what you need to do. They give you a certain amount of cash. And they tell you to go and you get there. Whatever you have to do to get there, get there. And follow the clues that we give you. And then there's different processes in that race. There's certain times where you might need a passport or things like that. And you end up having to go back. There's things that happen in that process. But the way that the amazing race happens is there's different legs of the race. Okay? I don't know how many it is. It's like 10 or 12 legs of the race. And you're set up to have the, the first person that gets there that always get a prize. Well, when you're going through the different legs of the race, 
they have the different uh, things called express passes. But if you end up being the first person to the destination, they give you an express pass and that lets you bypass one of the processes, one of the legs of the race, so that you can skip everyone else and get to the next level. And as I was listening to her story, I started thinking about that and I said, you know what, our life is like the amazing race. See, many of us, we want to hurry up and get to that destination. And for most of you in here, you determine it by what? What's your destination for the most part? Money. Right? Like, I want to make a whole lot of money. I get a lot of people. Uh, I don't only got the blog, but I want to make $10,000 in the next 30 days. What can I do? A lot of people do is get calculated. You have to tell me how many things you got to do, how many blog systems, sales that you have to make to get the same brand. And are you willing to work that hard? Or you come all in, right? But we often get a lot of people who predict everything by money. And they, in this business, we get started, we get excited, we see people here with the big checks, we write our first wall books, and we say, where's my check? <laughs> you told me that I was gonna be rich. I did five blog posts, posted two things on Facebook, and I shot one video, and I haven't made 10 grand yet, right? You guys do that though, right? Not you. But we have that idea that you start something and instantly you get those results. Like I don't you, if you drop a little bit, you'll do a couple of things and you'll get to your destination. But the truth of the matter is, guys, is your life is like the amazing race. There's different legs of the race that you have to run. There's clues that you get and there's rewards that you get when you get to the to the end of to the to the check-in spot, whatever it's called. Whenever you check in and you've done everything they told you to do, you get an opportunity to go to the next level. And our lives are like that because there's certain things in our life that we have to address and go through these different legs before we can get to the ultimate destination. And see, some of you guys are coming in here and you're looking at people who are on the tenth leg of the race and you want to get to where they are at on the tenth leg of the race, but you haven't completed everything on the first leg. And when it comes down to getting to a point where you can actually get bypassed, you can go to the next leg, there's certain things you have to do. I just recently saw an episode where they, this guy got an express pass. And he basically had to go find a surfboard. It was something with a certain picture that he had to find. And his ego was so huge about not using that express pass because he wanted to finish the course. But see, the truth is, he had an express pass that he can use to get past that challenge that he was in and bypass everyone else. And I was thinking about that, and I said, you know, all of us are on different legs of the race. Some of you, this is your first time in your first business. Some of you have been to different businesses before. Some of you have never really accomplished anything, but you have a great desire to get to that end reward. And so there's things that you have to come face to face with. Some of you need to learn work ethic. Some of you need to learn discipline. Some of you need to learn focus. Some of you need to learn commitment. There's so many different things that you have to encounter in that process. And in the amazing race, if they give you certain things that you have to do, and you skip any level of the instruction, they send you back to finish the course before you can pass. Some of you keep getting stuck in the same lane over and over again, you're trying to figure out, why should I move on? But you're coming up saying, why am I making no money? It's because it's instructions that you're missing <coughs> that's not allowing you to finish the leg of the race so that you can be able to go to the next leg. Well, I'm going to share something with you guys that I realized about where we are today. Because we're coming to a close. Empower Network is your express pass. Amen. And for the most part, if there's 12 legs, I've never seen anything like this before, but most of you can go from the first leg to the, to the at least the 11th leg pretty quickly. Okay? And let me tell you why. Because you get mindset training here, that if there's any challenges you face that have held you back, we show you exactly what you need to confront to move on. You get on the job training where you learn while you learn. If you just take action, and you get to make money doing it. Isn't that phenomenal? Woo! the money. Your reward is your development of your character. Your reward is to get your character. Your reward is your relationship with people that will change your life for the rest of your life. Your reward is sitting down and doing every blog post. Your reward is sitting down and shooting those videos. Your reward is running that race no matter what happens and staying so focused on it that you
that you find out that you're at the first leg of the race. You're the first one to, to complete that leg of the race. And next thing you know, you'll look up and you'll be standing on the stage.